Okay, so this video is going to be over a question. Now, I'm going to try and talk slower because my there's still an issue with recordings on my laptop. So, with that said, I'll try and repeat the main points. And I hope that this, I hope if the video does skip, I hope it does not skip too much. So really, this question's this question's really about how do you recognize a breakout versus trading range, and really this person says they sometimes have problems using a wide stop. and they realize that afterwards, so, correction, this is really a question about wide stops and especially when you're in a trading range and it's where swing highs and lows are easily achievable. Okay, really what this guy, what this person is asking is they, they want help on using a wide stop and when do you, you know, how do you use a wide stop in a trading range, how do you use it? in a breakout. That, that's really the main point. And the first thing, the first thing you have to understand is <clears throat> the, the single most important question you'll ever ask and you should ask with every bar is will this breakout succeed or fail? Now if you think about it, every little, if you look at any bar, let's take this, this bar right here this bull bar is breaking above this prior bar and these prior two bars. This bar right here broke below the prior bar. These are all breakouts. Most of them fail. Strong bull breakout quickly failed. So the biggest, most important part of this is context. It's the market cycle. And to this particular person, I highly advise it, it, if you are not watching whoever's listening to this video and this person who asked this question, if you're not watching Al's course, uh, you need to get it and watch it. Because he explains all this and there's really, I haven't fully looked at this question entirely. He's, he, this person gave me a paragraph with some examples. But to me, it looks like this is going to be somewhat of a broad question. And for the record, I'm, I may have to pause this video here and there so I can better structure answering this question. And then I'll try to answer it in pieces. So if it seems like it's skipping, it may not be completely. It may just be me pausing it. So let's let's start first by defining what is a trading range and a trend. Well, in order for me to do that, you first have to understand the market's goal is to it's searching for a value. If we really if you think back to economics, where your basic economics is supply and demand. So, if I'm looking at this chart right here, we've been sideways for going sideways. We break the market is very happy with this price level. So it does go down, it's probing up and down. And the reason for that is the market's goal, think of it as it's trying to facilitate trading because it's trying to get, it's trying to make things fair. The, the great, the easiest example Al uses in his course is, his new one at least is, it's a housing market. You know, if the goal of any market is to bring together buyers and sellers so that we can easily exchange things back and forth for fair value. You know, if you buy a home and then you want to sell it, there will be plenty of sellers to buy a home from you. And likewise, if, likewise, if you want to buy a home, there are plenty of choices and plenty of homes for you to buy from. So it makes the prices fair. That's kind of like an example right here. Everybody believes the price is fair. If it goes sideways, everyone believes the price is, it's not too expensive. It's not too cheap, and if it, it starts to go up and it quickly runs out of buyers, 
sellers take over and it sells off. It starts to sell off, quickly runs out of sellers and buyers start buying. So with that said, you know, we're going sideways, lots and lots of overlap, overlap. There's reversals every few seconds. So characteristics of a trading range will include big tails, overlapping bars. You know, if you look, for instance, look right here, there's not a lot of overlap between these two bars here, ton of overlap here, not much overlap between the past couple of lots of overlap, lots of overlap. So a trading range is a, is a fair value, best way to put it. And very often the market has to, when it starts to go sideways for too long, it has to probe, try to break out to the upside and see if that's, see what the right price is. If you think about it, there's news. There's new news in this world every minute of every day. Things are happening. So there's new information for the market to value what the fair price should be. And because of that, it, because it's happening at every second, it's getting new information, it has to probe up and down to find the right price because it'll never exactly find it. It can find what it what is close to the right price. So it's breaks to the downside. And look right here, trend bars. Big bear bar closing when it's low, near its low, but then bad follow through. Then we're getting a lot of overlap, overlap. So one push down, two pushes down, three pushes down. It's the market cycle. And by the way, through this video, I expect whoever's listening to at least understand enough of the market cycle and at least understand enough about wedges and channels. If you do not understand it, then my video is not going to help you. Most of my videos are going. I'm going off the assumption that whoever's watching them has studied Al Brooks' material for long enough to understand the terminology. So, real quick summary, lots of overlap, trend bars, not much overlap. That's, that's the big key. If you think about it, just ask yourself. Who's making money? One of the easiest, I apologize, my sinuses have been acting up. One of the easiest ways to ask, to figure out if you're in a trend or a trading range is think about how would you structure trades if you were trading this? So, you know, if you look, stop entries are not really working. They're scalping. Some are working, but most traders are fading highs it starts to go down they buy new lows so every time it falls below support they buy when it goes above the distance they sell you're in the trading range over here starts to go up bears are not making money up here but up here they eventually make money so really this person's right he's saying this person is saying he believe this person believes that the characteristics of a trading range it's overlapping bars, no gaps. He, this person says, yeah, they, they are between two trend lines. It can be seen as channels or horizontal. Yeah, if you think about it, a channel is basically a slope trading range. Trading range simply means, a trading range means there's a way to buy and a way to sell. So there's two there's a reason to buy and a reason to sell. Usually there's two setups. Like for instance here, second entry short, double bottom, there's a reason to sell, a reason to buy. Over here, you know, maybe a double top here and here, double bottom, wedge bottom. And this person has two examples right here and again I'm trying to think as I go here so I apologize if this sounds kind of all over the place it's just one of the problems with 
this is a broad question. It's really, it's asking how do you recognize a trend versus a trading range? And that, that's really the whole, that's like the whole concept of trading. You know, that is the single most important thing you have to figure out in order to learn how to trade profitably. So it's, will this break out? The problem is, is every trend bar, is every trend bar, every, any time frame you look at, like right here, each one of these bars is breaking out of something. Breaking out, breaking out. Every single bar on this chart is a breakout. Now, and the reason I'm saying that is look at a one minute chart. Bull breakout, bear breakout, bull breakout, bear breakout. You know, if I go to, a, here's an hourly chart. It's, a, it's trying to break out, bull breakout failed. So you have to understand buying and selling pressure. Look over here, gaps. So for this question, I'm just going to, I'm going to really, I'm going to focus on using wide stops. I, I'll try to explain, here, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to assume that, that whoever's watching understands at least basic characteristics between a trend and a trading range. So let's really look more into this particular person. This person gives some examples. On the first example, during this question, this person says, so when a trading range is established and it has ended, it's difficult for me to identify. He, this person lists below a few ways that he know that Al says you can identify when trading range is breaking out, such as strong bull bar with follow through. So real quick, let's look at that. What is a strong bull bar? Well, back to a five minute chart. This is the Euro Japanese Union. And if we look at it, right over here, strong bull breakout follow through. Well, this is a pretty much a trading range day, but let's just kind of, here's a good example. Sideways for many, many bars. Strong, this is the best example probably of a breakout of the trading range. Strong bull bar, very strong follow through. Think about what's going on. You have traders who sold here, traders who sold here, and look what happened. They sell this high and they're immediately trapped. So what are they gonna do? It's a low probability trade, which it's a low probability outcome, which means it's a pain trade. A pain trade is simply any successful breakout. And what's gonna happen is, you're gonna get at least a second leg and you're going to get probably some sort of measure to move up. Maybe the first one I would always look at is a measure move of the two breakout bars right here. Clearly you got that. So real quick, how would I use, if I was using a wide stop, maybe I was selling here, I would get out on this bar. Just, it's so strong. You're going to get a second leg and there's too much risk of some sort of measure to move up. Something like that. Anyways, back to this person's, he uses a chart. I have no idea what this person trades or what market this is, but if you're looking at it, I can't really get rid of this mouse here, but he has a trading range drawn, which is correct. And then he has a breakout. And he's saying it goes back in the trading range. Yes. So what's going on here? Well, I can only, I don't know what market this is. I can only see what is right here. And I hope you can see the problem. Done. Let's go to the middle a little bit. There we go. So right here, we have channel down, a bull breakout of the channel, pull back in a strong breakout. Well, to me, it looks kind of parabolic. Three push. Here. Well, we had a strong breakout, deep pullback, so bulls are disappointed. Bulls who bought up here, and maybe they held down here, they're disappointed enough where they're going to exit a break even up here if they can. So we're probably, as this move goes down in the stages of the trading range, think about it. A channel is the start of a trading range. 
this is a channel. Well, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to keep going up and eventually we're probably Channel. So, bulls disappointed. They'll buy more, scalp out. Bears know that bulls are going to scalp out, so they're selling. So, you know, if I was selling in here, well, I'm wrong on this bar. I got to get out. Now, with that said, pretty much a trending trading range. So, I don't know how strong this range was, but if the trader sells and they sell more up here, they'll of the time, if you use a wide stop to scale in, you can avoid a loss. Now, the problem with that is you have to really understand price action because you may, it's very easy to sell this high, sell more here, and exit the trade up here for a big, big loss. And so, if you're using, and another problem is you have to trade small. So, this person's really this person's real question is about wide stops. And I really my first what I wonder is is this person scaling in? What market are they trading? And are they comfortable with the risk? So looking at here, trading range. Broke to the downside. But what's the market cycle? What are we doing here? Well we have trend line, here's bear trend, trend line broke. Think about the bears who sold down here. Bears sold this low. They're disappointed up here, so what are they going to do? Well, they may sell down here. Price goes up. They're going to sell in here, possibly. And they're going to look to get out. You know, if I had to guess, I kind of wish I knew what market this was. I'd use a trade station. But if you sold here and sold here, break even is probably right there. And look what happened. Look to the left. We're not breaking out of really anything. So let me explain that a little bit. Look to the left. Breakouts, true, really strong breakouts, actually break out of something. The more bars you break above, the stronger the breakout. Is this a strong breakout? Well, it is, but look at the context. Three pushes up, one, two, three, four dollars away. And we're breaking out of immediately got bad follow-through. So this is a pullback. Bear breaks out below and the trend is down. Here, best looking bear bars. 20 year old late in a trend. Best bull bars late in a trend. Usually exhaustion. And look over here, what are we breaking out of? Well, we're still this low. So really we didn't break out of anything. Or in some time frame, this is all just two or three two or three or four bars. Up here, what did we break out of? Well, we broke above the high of the day, but look at this bar. You're thinking, gee, that's disappointing. Remember, disappointment and confusion are the hallmarks of trading. So, down here, what are we breaking out of? Well, look to the left. We could not even close below these lows. So it's not that strong. Out of well, look to the left. We broke we broke out above all of these bars. <clears throat> so any anybody who's who is short and sold in here and is still long, or excuse me, anybody who is held short through any of these bars is holding a losing position. What are they gonna do? They're gonna get out. <clears throat> you know. You have to be pessimistic about breakouts because you may fail. In your example, right here, sideways, it tried to break out to the downside, but immediately got bad follow through. So look at that. Bear breakout, immediately got bad follow through. Take it back up. You know, think about it. This is just really a pullback. Bulls buy up here, they buy more down here. Betting price. Here. Well, look what happened up here. We've been rallying, broke out to the upside, turned down. And after this person shows his picture and his question, he said, he posted, he said, I'm 
replacing an SL according to it, I would know how to do it. So I'm assuming by SL you mean just protective stops. One second. So all in all, here, here's another example this person shows, and try to ask, try to ask specific questions. And now th this person did a really good job of asking, of showing examples and demonstrating their understanding, but I think the issue is it's just a broad, it's a broad question in general. It's basically, how do you use a wide stop in a trading range? And how do you recognize when you're wrong and you're getting a break out of the trading range? That's a difficult question just because that is a big, big concept of trading. I will say this though, before I talk more about this, person, this next example, this person has, trading ranges are, excuse me, many people use wide stops for the simple fact that the more you trade, the more experience you get, the more you start to understand, and the higher, look up Z scores. In Al's new course, he talks about the higher your winning percentage is, the less likely you are to blow an account. It's really as simple as that. If I win 90% of the time, my odds of going bankrupt, so to speak, for lack of simple terms, is pretty low. You know, my, as Al calls it, death is crazy. And it probably won't happen. Now, if my probability is 25%, there's a big, big chance that I may not make it very long. So that's why most, I think, experienced traders tend to gravitate to a higher probability. Because, number one, it's always more fun to win. And it's easier to structure trades mathematically if you do not have to catch the one winner. So, you know, if you take a swing trade that has a 40% chance of winning or a, let's say you take a 25%, you do something where you have a tiny, tiny risk, huge, huge reward, but your probability is very, very low. Well, you know, what if you, I don't know, I mean, maybe you're, you're selling the breakouts, you're buying this breakout, buying this breakout, selling this breakout, buying this breakout, and then you sell this breakout, and then eventually, I don't know, maybe you have to go to the dentist or something, and you miss this big breakout. Well, you just lost on four or five trades, and you were not able to get the last one. That's why most traders prefer to scale. They prefer high probability. And on this chart, this person's asking why. Okay, I see what this person's asking. So they're saying, you know, if I'm selling in a in a trading range, why would I use a stop based upon a, if I'm short up here or anywhere in here? Why would I use a stop and measure move up? only to see price go here, turn back down and stop me out. Well, that is a very good question. And when traders do that, I think what they're really doing is they're not putting their stop right here. They're putting their stop somewhere up here. You know, they're, what they're betting is if I sell up here and we get a breakout, I can sell more at the measured move target and make a second entry and break even on my first. So let's find an example of this. Let's see here. Let's go like higher. This is a 60 minute chart. Here's a trading range. Okay. And let's say you're saying, gee, I'm gonna sell these highs. Well, I'm gonna sell this high. You know, you're thinking strong enough breakout will probably at least test up to here. I'm going to set a limit order up here. And I'm going to put a stop 
at this med remove target. Well, you're right. You'd feel pretty dumb to sell here, exit here, and price test down when you could have exited to a break even. Most traders are really putting a stop at here, off the chart. You know, they're using an incredibly wide stop. So they're selling, they're selling more, and they're exiting with a profit. And they're confident doing this because they know, number one, there's resistance over here, so price will probably fail, and they can probably avoid a loss. Now, I personally, I would rather, if I was short and I got this breakout, I'd just get out. Because you know the probability is you'll get a second leg up. So I would rather just sell up here and move on with the trade. So I'd rather, most traders, I really think, would exit, look to buy a little pullback, scalp out, and then look to sell. Right? And you find there's, you know, there's tons of examples. Happens all the time. That's the format we're talking about now, right? So, we find more with that. Yeah. Traders do the same thing with breakouts. And I think this really, you know, I said earlier that a lot of traders will, you know, they see this as a measure, they see this as a large trading range, so they'll. They'll sell, they'll buy this low and scale in lower, which some will. But I think a lot of traders, it's more of kind of, th I'm, I'm losing my, I can't think of the right terminology here, so I'll just describe it. But a lot, if you think about it, a lot of trading is based off of risk rewards of one to one, so equal distant moves. What I mean by that is, strong bear breakout, you'll probably get a measure move down. And one of the things that happens is, let's take two examples. I'll try and it's not it's not accurate completely, but here you have a bear breakout. You'll probably get a measure move down, right? Well, a lot of traders will sell, and they'll take the profits down here. You know, spike pullback channel. That's what causes channels. And if you think about it, you know, if you if you know a lot of traders are going to if they're gonna take prof profits down here, well, a lot of traders will buy down here. Let me start over, let me explain it this way. Traders usually evaluate things based on risk reward. So, if I buy here and my stop's down here, what are the odds I'll get a one-to-one? -one? So, what are the odds if I buy here, my stop's down here, that price is going to go up to here? Well, it's pretty low. So, a lot of times what I like to do is ask myself basic probabilities. If I, if I you know, kind of over here, for example, I can see these bear bars. If my stops up here and I sell here, what's the odds that price will go a measure move down? Well, not very good. You know, look where you are. Price has to break down here. So, you know, I hope, I'm, I hope this is making sense. Really what I'm getting at is, it's simple measure moves. Bulls know that price is not probably going to not reach here, so what are they going to do? Well, they're going to bet on the opposite. If bear sells, puts their stop up here, betting on a measure move down, they'll probably lose. So why not buy here, put a stop down here, betting that price gets to here? Another example is this one I was showing just a minute ago. Yes, 
Bears are going to short, knowing price is going to get down to here. Bull, but take the opposite. It's an equal distant move. It's one times your risk, in theory. Traders, it's really not going to be one times your actual risk. Down here, a lot of traders are going to say, well, okay, where's, if I'm short, where's my stop? Stop probably somewhere, maybe here, here. You know, somewhere like that. Well, if I sell here and I have a stop up here, what's the odds I get a measurement down? Probably not that great. Well, maybe if I put my stop up here and I sell here and put my stop up here, what's the odds I get a measurement down? Well, not that great. See, when you have a I like to see wide stops as one-to-one -one risk rewards. So really, when you're trying to figure out what when to use a wide stop, when to not use a wide stop, think about it in terms of a one-to-one -one risk reward. So, and where I'm getting at over here is, you have a measured move down to here. What are the odds price goes? Another measured move down here. So what are the odds that if you're short and your stops up here, price goes a full 200% or two measure moves down, probably not very high. So a lot of traders will buy, put a stop down here, betting the price goes up to here. That is the basis of wide stops. So let's look over here. Let's try and zoom in here. There we go. So let's say Break. This is a 30 minute chart of the dollar Japanese yen. And with that said, I would highly recommend trading Forex because you can use wide stops and not be worried about the risk. Let's look over here. You have a trading range. Bear breakout, trading range. Well, first question is what's the market cycle? Clearly, we had a breakout. And now we're in a trading range. So there's two outcomes. Trend reversal, which would be a reversal up, or trend resumption, which would be a reversal down. Now, here, look to the left. What's the dominant feature of the past 100 bucks? It's clearly this right here. So the odds are going to, although the bulls were able to make the market go sideways for 20 bars at least, so the probability is close to 50-50. It's really, it really does favor the bulls, the bears, excuse me. And I really don't want to say the probability is 50-50, just because this is such a big bear breakout that on a smaller, that on a higher time frame, this is only a few bars to pull back. So until the bears do something, the bulls do something really credible, this is just a pullback. And then you get a strong bear breakout. Well, let's say I'm long anywhere in here. And I have a stop down here. Maybe I have a stop down here. And I see this bar. Sideways, and I see this bear bar. I'm going to think, huh. We just closed below the past 20, 30 bars. Do I really want to be long when I see this close? No, I want to be short. So what am I going to do? I don't care where I bought. I don't care where. If, I don't care if my stop is all the way down here. I'm going to get out. Why? Because price is probably going lower. So if it's probably going lower, why would you be long? When you're using, generally, when traders use a wide stop, if the market clearly becomes one direction. If they're long and the market clearly becomes always in short, they get out. So here, bear breakout. One, two, three, four. Four bars down. Compare these four bars to the past 20 bars. Are you saying, oh, the market's cheap, I need to buy? No. All the bulls that bought here are trapped. And they're going to use any pullback they can to exit going lower at least for a few bars this is a pain trade it's a pain trade because if you were long and you held you're going to be experiencing pain and 
look at these. Look at the open of this bar and the high of this bar. It went only a, a few pips above this close. This close. This bar open only a few pips above this close. This is a forex chart, so obviously I'm referring to pips. <clears throat> Small pullback. First first level is going to fail. Three pushes down. One, two, three. So let's. You know, how would we structure a wide stop? Well, am I going to buy here? The only way I would ever buy here, which I would not, is if I bought. Traders will buy here. In theory, they'll use a really wide stop, maybe 50 points, 50 pips. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a 30 minute chart, maybe 200 pips, 100 pips. They're going to use a stop somewhere down here, go buy, and they're going to wait to buy more somewhere down here, and they'll exit for a profit. The only way I'd use a wide stop here, the only thing I would ever be doing is short. I would sell anywhere in here, stop up here, betting we get a measure move down. Breakout, I put my stop up here. New breakout, stop up here. Three pushes down, one, two, three. Well, you can exit short here. Three, four bars sideways, probably developing a trading range three pushes down. Probably not a lot left. But again, minor reversal, probably best at least sideways for 10 bars. But it's climactic. Sell climax, sell climax, another sell climax. Down here. I would rather be thinking about buying. You know, we may have a measuring gap. Have a measure down here. So as we're going down here, gap's closing. So when we're going here, we're going sideways for 20 or 30 bars. That's the market telling me I could probably buy a new low of the day. So I'm not wanting to buy up here. I want to see three or four pushes down. And I want to see the market go sideways. By the market going sideways, it's showing the bulls and the bears that if we get a new low, we may reverse. Look at this. Look at the sell-off. Three, four, five bars closing on their lows. Well, probably a second leg down. We got a small second leg down. Strong bull bar. This is where traders are buying and using a wide stop. They're going to buy, and maybe they'll put their stop down here. And they're going to say, okay, well... What's the odds if I buy here? Let me start over. This is this is one way I like to think. It's one way I want to I like to think about what to do. Clearly always in short. Just because my we're always in short does not mean I want to be short. It's just always in short. You know, but it can quickly become always in long very fast. Here, you're always in short, maybe, but you may be in a broad bull channel and at the bottom of a pullback. So it doesn't mean you want to be short. Anyways, we sold off and got this bar. Every on every bar you should be asking if you're would you want to be long or short? And if you are short, right here, and you can't decide if you want to get out of this bar, ask yourself this simple question. If you are not short, and you are short right now, would you be willing to sell above the high of the bar? If you cannot answer that question, if you are short, and you say, gee, I can't decide if I should exit my trade, but I don't want to sell above this bar. I think it's a buy. I think it's a buy. Well, you need to get out. So, if you're short, stops up here. What are the odds price goes and measure move down? low. Take the opposite. If I buy, put my stop down here, what is the odds that price goes up to here? Well, it's pretty good. So for me, buying using a wide stop, betting price gets up to here, makes a whole lot of sense. So what about here? Why not use a wide stop? You know, they're saying, gee, it's a bull breakout. Maybe follow through two decent bull bars trapping all these bull trapping all these bears. We're gonna go measure move up. And you're right, we probably will. But there's one issue. Tight channel, trend line break, 
Is this a major trend reversal? Probably not. Is this a major trend reversal? Probably not. Is this a major trend reversal? This is strong enough that we'll probably find buyers somewhere. 50% pullback, maybe down here. You know, this still looks kind of confusing. It looks, there, it's uncertainty. So, since, you know, if we got a bull bar, maybe if we had one more strong bull bar, we wouldn't have fallen below this low, but very often price will fall below and find buyers and rally up. So for me, if I'm long, I'm not getting out here. My stops all the way down here. Then what? Air breakout. Another bull bar. Another bull bar. We should not be thinking, gee, we're going for a measure move down. We're not going for a measure move down. The bears had their chance. We're going to learn the trading range. If anything, we're probably going to go back up here. Bulls are buying. You're not going to get a measure move down. And even if you think you are going to get a measure move down, then bull bar. Well, the odds of you getting a measure move down are pretty low now. So you need to be looking to buy, not looking to sell. And look, one, two, after three bull bars, you're wrong. You need to get out. I would get out. Personally, I'd probably get out here if I was short. The simple fact that bears who sold here and scaled in are disappointed they're going to get out break even. Here, trading range. We may, maybe we're channeling up. Maybe this is a some sort of sideways channel. Maybe something like that. Well, look what happened. Sold here, scaled in higher, made money. Sold this high, scaled in, made money. Well, to me, this looks like a channel. Bull channel, bear flag. We'll probably get a downside breakout. This could go on for a long, long time. Top of the channel. The best looking bull bars and many, many bars. Is this going to be a measuring gap and lead to a measuring gap? Probably not. It might, but it probably will not. And then look, so I want to just kind of, one thing to remember is, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine, it's not really, but I just want people to understand, channels and trading ranges do not have defined lines, you know, it bothers me, it's, I don't know, it kind of annoys me to be honest, when I see people draw that say, okay, the trading range is this high, and it's this low. I'm sorry, it's, you know, this is the exact high of the trading range. How do you know that? What if this is the high? What if this is the high? All of this is the trading range. A trading range, think, break down the word trading range. Trading range means a range. There's no line, there's no exact points. It's a zone. So, you know, really here, when you're drawing channels, reversal up, another reversal up here. If I was going to draw it, I would draw a line here and here, connect it down, and then I would say, well, gee, we turned here. Maybe this is just an outlier. So, draw it, pinpoint it to here and here, snap it up. You always have to wonder, by the way, let me just kind of, let me start over with this. And just so I can tell you how I would think about a channel. My first thought is this, okay. we reversed up, we reversed up, so I'm going to draw a line, maybe I'll draw, I'll uh, make it parallel to here. That'd be my first thought. But my problem is I'm thinking, gee, we're getting a lot of bull bars. Strong breakout, starting to turn down, but do I want to sell? We're at the top of the channel. I'm not selling. There is a zero chance I'm selling. This is strong enough. We had we have bears trapped. If anything, I'm buying. I'm buying a pullback. Stop down here. Okay, starting to go sideways. So now I'm, you know, I'm I'm probably I'm certainly willing to exit a short. You know, I think the sells maybe it was, it's probably up here. I don't want to sell on a stop. I'm not ready for that. I'd rather look to buy. Starting to sell off. Starting to sell off. And then look, three pushes down. Bulls are buying again. Now, right here, 
and we start to go down, start to go down. And you can see this channel, it's starting to hold. Start to go down sideways. Now, with that, you got to kind of play around with the channel. Fairly tight, but this looks weak. Bear sold, they sold this high and made money. They'll probably sell this high and make money. Strong bull breakout, strong follow through. So, even without me, I could draw a line here and here. Well, let me explain it first. Let's say I, I just said this is the channel, the, I have the channel defined like this. We broke out, we broke out. Well, typically, in five bars, the market will reverse back down. Now, that's five bars on the highest time frame. Here's a 60 minute chart. Well, 60 minute chart. We have a channel, broke above, turned down. Back to a 30. Broke above. Broke above, probably turning down. So it doesn't matter. I could draw it like that, or I could have had it like I had it the first time and said, here's the channel, here's the channel. Pop projector up to here, and there's the top. Doesn't matter. It's all the same. Anyways, we broke above. Probably going to test the bottom. If I was long and I see this, I'm getting out. No question. Probably some sort of measurement move down. Strong breakout, but one issue. Are we going to get a measurement move down to here? Should I buy? Use a wide stop down here? Well, probably not. My issue is this is strong, and we probably will get a second leg, but to me, Sell climax, pull it sideways, sell climax, tails on the bottom, best looking bear bar. Yeah, I don't want to buy it, but I don't ever want to, I don't want to hold, I don't think we'll go down here. But we may. Hmm. This is, you know, what do you do here? Well, pull back, probably at least going to have a second leg down. Bears that got out here, probably get short again here, second entry. And you can see a lot of traders, they bought this low, scaled in, they're getting out, selling off, trying to form a double bottom, bad signal bar. Again, probably sideways. In odds favor, at least a little more down. But you have to remember, bottom of a channel, starting to go sideways for a lot of bars here. Bear break out. If I was long and I saw this, I'm getting out. To me, Long, I'm wrong. We're back to always in short. We never left always in short. I need to sell. Then we're going sideways. So we're going to go sideways again. Tight channel, probably at least a little more down. Now, three pushes down one, two, three. So reasonable to get out here. But this is probably a. You know, I think we will get back up to here at some point, but probably at least second leg down. And there you go. Now, we're starting to go sideways. I'd probably be looking to get out of shorts. I just got here. I think we're going to at least test up to here. We have an open gap. So you have to be thinking about the potential of this. So we'll see. Well, we're doing a good job. Now we're starting to go sideways. We test it back into here. Sell climax, consecutive sell climaxes, probably two legs up. I think bears will start selling simply because we tested the gap, we'll break out. We'll break out, small follow through, but I think bears will sell up here. Now we're starting to form a tight channel. Bar tested down, turning up. Probably starting to go sideways. So, yeah, 
unfortunately. Get that gold. Also, we have gaps. So anyone selling here, they'd probably scale in. They'd get out over here. When the channel, when the trading range is tight, better just wait for a breakout up or down. Book so decent breakout. Probably at least a little more up, and then look. So when I say a little more up, that's what I mean. A little more up, you know. Understand. But bulls bought, they scaled in, they're disappointed by this, and they're getting out. And remember, percent pullback. And when I see this, I'm selling. Sell, stop up here. I mean, the probability that you will get a measure move down is incredibly high. Just hold on. But you have to be disappointed by this. So, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go too fast. What else really is that point I'm talking? Strong breakout, a little more down. Well, when you see this, if I'm trading this chart and I see this bear breakout, I'll sell. But then I see this, I have to wonder, gee, what happened here? Well, no, that's, uh, I'm thinking, hmm, maybe we're not going for a measure move down. Maybe I'm wrong. Me. This is confusing. I get out because even if we get down to here, we'll probably find buyers. So buy, pull back, and then look. So again, context helps. So I hope this helps. I mean, I. It's hard to answer this question completely because there's, you know, context is everything. Context, context, context. There's no simple, you know, here, here's this bar. Broke below the past 100 bars. Reversed up. Well, why is that? Well, if I look at it, the 14th. Here's the 14th. Look to the left. Below the past the month of June, we failed. Context is everything. So, hope this video helps and let me know if you have any other questions. Thank you.